guys, it's Jessie from Bear Flower Farm. Today is T minus two days till my market on Sunday and I honestly feel like crap right now. I'm definitely not in a state near where Serena was from You Can't Eat the Grass about two weeks ago, but I definitely feel myself coming down with something. I think I actually got sick from a certain someone who decided to go into the office this week who knew they were sick and were heavily medicated. Anyway, so the show needs to go on. Um, I need to harvest my flowers for Sunday's market. Sunday's market is not looking to be too promising right now. Um, it is going to be rainy. It is gonna be a little bit cooler. So I have no idea what's gonna happen, but I have a bunch of asters that you can see behind me. I'm gonna give you a close up view. And I'm pretty excited because I think this is gonna be the last market with um, summer annuals before frost. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna get a frost within the next two to three weeks um, before my next market. So let me show you what I have in the field right now. So this row is popping with color, not necessarily the most fall type colors, but colors nonetheless. So these are asters that came from plugs back in mid-July, I would say. And so they went to the ground mid-July and these have phenomenal stem length. However, some of them do not. So I can't even give you a reason as to why some fared better than the others. But you know, what I love about asters is that this is a single stem, but it feels like it's a very, um, it's a very full, Type of stem so it will take up a lot of space in the bouquet and it'll just also make it easier and faster for me to make bouquets so i've got a few of these asters here my sunflowers i don't think will actually make it to maturity because the frost will probably take them out but i do have some sunflowers in the um, refrigerator right now so i'll be able to use them That took about five minutes to harvest about what I think will be 16 bouquets worth of aster stems. So here they are. Um, let me show you what the stem length and the bunches look like from what I was talking about. So this is one straight stem, right? And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buds on here that are fully open. So I'm gonna pair these with some yellow sunflowers. Uh, no more bicolor, thank God for me, cause I don't really love the bicolors. Um, they're gonna pair with some yellow. I'm gonna put some amaranth. I think I have some snapdragons. Uh, the foliage will come more from some nine bark, some basil, and then of course some celosia and dahlias. But this is the, the asters are gonna be the star of the show. And I'm hoping with, you know, me wanting to get rest, that I'll just be able to, you know, throw these together really, really quickly. So I'm gonna get harvesting the other stuff. I'm actually gonna get some more buckets to be a little bit more organized. And I'm hoping to be done with harvesting within the next 20, 30 minutes. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is the flamingo feather slosia behind me. So I know a lot of people have been growing this and had the same experience as me in the beginning or in the middle of summer, which is that it was not pink. It was very much just white. And lo and behold, when the cool weather started setting in, it started really turning pink. So let me show you. Um, this is what the Johnny's seed catalog basically had as a photo. This is not what I got until maybe about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So I've learned that for the flamingo feather, excuse me, there's an ant on there, uh, slosia, you have to wait for it to get to, um, you know, more cool weather for it to turn the true color that the seed packet says it is. So, um, 
the ones behind me have largely gone to seed. If you see the white thin middle, um, that's an indication that it's basically too late to harvest. I mean, it's not too late to harvest in the sense that some of your customers, if they want seed, it's not a bad thing. But I actually had a customer who said that she bought someone else's flowers. They had celosia in it. And like three days into the vase life, um, all this black stuff started coming out. She thought it was bugs, but it was actually seed. So I told her you could save that seed and you can plant it. And that made her very excited to buy bouquets with celosia, except for the fact that I typically pick my celosia at the right time so if you pick it at the right time it's not going to go to seed and if you pick it a little bit too late um i'll even say that some, like this is more or less okay there might be one in the middle here where it's a little bit more white that may start going to seed but it is always something that i talk to my customers about if you see black dots falling out of this it is not bugs it is actually seed you can throw it away or you can keep it and try to grow your own celosia next year So I feel like this is the first time that I'm harvesting in what has been cool weather for at least a full week straight. I would say it's been a week and a half where the nights are at least in the low 50s, if not lower. And um, I just haven't looked at my plants as closely as I should have. We've been doing a lot of home renovation. But look at this status. It's crazy. I mean the amount of greenery that this thing has grown in the past two weeks is incredible now that being said i wouldn't say i've gotten um a ton of status but i'm definitely still getting status from the same status that i planted back in it was like may so it just goes to show you that some of these cool weather crops really do thrive in this type of cool weather and i noticed the same for my straw flower they looked a lot healthier the leaves were a lot more vibrant and bigger and it was just you know there's a lot of things that i just have been um they've been producing a little bit more slowly in the heat of the summer but they are bouncing back and once i start ha harvesting the snaps you know that's a completely different um story too so i'm looking forward to getting to those snaps. let's also take some time to talk about my basil which has not done well at all this season Part of it is just because I did not water it and it needed to be watered. But look at this basil over here. It is so lush and I'm gonna be able to use the greenery as a filler. So I originally grew these for the flower spikes um, that you can see in the back, but the stems are just too short or they were too short. So I think with all the recent rainfall that we've been getting, I mean, we've been getting at least an inch of rain over the last um, three weeks. So like one inch of rain per week for the last three weeks, it's done this basil a lot of good. I'm gonna try to harvest as much as possible because um, I don't think they're gonna make it to my next market from a frost perspective. But even if I can't use all of them, I'm gonna make pesto out of it. So my favorite basil, I bought three types of basil to plant for cut flowers. The first one was um, cinnamon basil. The second was uh, Mrs. Burns citrus lemon basil, citrus lemon one of them um, and the third one was purple cardinal and this was actually free seed that I got from Baker Creek it turns out that my favorite is the free seed the purple cardinal and the reason is because it has this really really lush um, foliage so this is it and then it's gonna have a very um, purple flower top which I'll show you this is an example so you can see that the greenery is um, the leaves are very big and then you get this little purple cluster on top and so there are some back there that never have gotten to this purple cluster but you can see signs of the purple cues so I think they'll still work really really well with the fall bouquets but this smells really good it literally smells like like a plate of pesto pasta so I'm hoping that will also attract people to the bouquets the sensory experience All right, and just like that, I've got another bucket. Look at this one. Whoops, almost dropped it. 
But look at that, isn't that crazy? I think this is gonna be awesome to work with. Gotta get a third bucket. So you can see I have snapdragons back there, but the question is, can I actually use them? Because I've been seeing that this time of year, there's a lot of eggs being laid inside the snapdragon flowers and they turn to caterpillars, which the snapdragon survives, you know, enough of a vase life that these things are crawling out, um, you know, a week into the customer having the bouquet. So if I see eggs, I basically don't harvest it. So we'll see if it works but you can tell these are taking off again these are the first things that ever went into the ground here at the farm when we broke ground back in um april i had started these from seeds since like january and i just left them um so they are really thriving with this cooler weather and these are the rocket series so let's check uh, that's a white one lots of eggs in there <laughs> Okay, potential. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about this. They either have eggs or there's a ton of holes in the petals, so I think we're gonna skip these rockets and then go to the Madame butterflies and see how they do. All right, so here's some of the Madames. Um, there's not a ton of them, there's a few. So um, the, the, these are a lot easier to get out worms and bugs because the flower petals are open and that's one of the main reasons why I chose to grow a Madame. I was actually preferring to grow a Chantilly but uh, they were out of those plugs. So um, I chose a mixed variety of the Madams um, just so that if I had to, I could dunk them in water and it's a lot easier to get bugs and eggs out. So let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, damn. A lot of holes, but this one looks really good. Like, look at that. So yeah, like I can typically see if there's a bug in the flower over here right let's see yep focus um this one looks pretty good and then i like it when the flowers haven't fully opened because um it's less likely that it got pollen or couldn't have gotten pollinated but less likely that a bug actually um laid eggs in there um usually if there's holes in a petal that's how you can tell but this one looks this one looks good definitely not the best harvest of snapdragon but still got some um and i have some from the potomac series so these are the rockets these were put in also in late april cut them back and now they are developing these much thicker stronger stems with the full heads um they were really suffering in the summer and i was shocked because potomac is supposed to be a variety that can handle the heat but I mean, the heat this summer was pretty intense without a lot of water. So I think that's why I didn't do as well. But, you know, I was not getting these quality type of heads with the Potomac. They were just a lot more skinnier. They were uh, more frail. The Even the petals felt less full. So, I, you know, I definitely chalk it up to weather for sure. And this is the um, Costa series um, for the, um, what was it? Apricot Costa series. So... Here's the snaps I get to work with this week. And so there you have it. These are what we just harvested right now. Three very full buckets. I've got some sunflowers in the fridge. And then what I'm actually gonna try to do this time is I am going to be making the majority of the bouquets at the market. So I have a family wedding tomorrow that is about two hours away each way. And then obviously I have the market on Sunday. So I'm gonna make a couple of bouquets, hopefully tomorrow when I get back. And then at the market, I am actually gonna be making the majority and I will be cutting dahlias 
the morning of. So hopefully, you know, I'll have them hydrated in hot water. And I think that will also help give them a better vase life. Hey guys, it's Sunday morning and I'm at home because my market ultimately got canceled. I actually made a decision to opt out of my market last night, just looking at the wind gusts, the amount of rain we were going to get. Um, I didn't want to risk getting more sick, even though I was feeling better. And I'm glad I made that call because they ultimately basically canceled the market, except for this one large vendor who happens to be a farm with a lot of CSA members. So they're keeping that vendor there today to pick up some, um, you know, CSA boxes for produce. Um, they obviously can also sell vegetables, jams and things like that. So they're kind of that like big vendor that provides that farmer's market uh, host of produce for people who are still gonna go. But for the rest of us, um, you know, it's it's a day in and it it is definitely raining outside. Um, I mean, the market turnout is probably gonna be pretty dismal. So regardless, I obviously harvested my flowers um, on Friday and I will be trying to sell these on Facebook Marketplace. So rather than making these at the market, I will be making them now. And I figured I would show you the bouquet making process, um, go over again how I sell on Facebook Marketplace if you missed out on that one. Um, and the other thing is that I have been putting some more blooms on Facebook Marketplace. I've noticed that it takes a little bit of while for those posts to build momentum. So I also wanna trial again to see if that first time was a fluke um, and I got a ton of interest or if this is something that can be sustained. So without further ado, I'm going to start making blooms. Um, I'm going to do a combination of what I usually do, which is I'm going to put some of the harder to grab stems from the bucket onto the table and then I'll keep some of the other ones in the bucket and that will help me be more efficient with making the bouquets. And I am going to try to time myself. I'm going to try to be a little bit more efficient. I'm expecting to get maybe about... I would say 13 bouquets out of all of this, give or take a couple. I had intended on going outside to harvest some more basil for my filler. I don't know how realistic that is, but even if I just make 10 bouquets and sell 10 bouquets, I'm pretty happy. I would actually bring the rest to work on Monday. So let's get started. I've actually been wearing gloves more recently for making bouquets just because I find that sometimes I develop not a rash, but it I get itchy or whatever. So just to make sure that doesn't happen, I put on these garden gloves. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the focal here, the sunflowers, on this coffee table that I have in the back. And before I start, I do have a bucket for my stems to cut into. I have a clean bucket of water to put the final bouquets into. And I get a lot of questions about this, so I want to show this is the holding solution that I use. This is the Flora Life Express Universal 300. It is a holding solution, which means that it does not have as much sugar as typical flower food that I would give out with my customers when they buy a bouquet, but it has some sugar. It has some, it, it, it basically allows the flowers to not open up completely, but also give them enough energy in the form of a carbohydrate to keep them until sale. And with the Express Universal 300, supposedly once you cut the stem, it helps them hydrate a little bit more easily and you don't need to cut the stem again before you sell. But I will be inherently cutting the stem because I need to get all the stems at the same length. So that's why I put the holding solution into the final bucket and I do not put the holding solution when I harvest. When I harvest, it is just with regular old clean water. Obviously the buckets are cleaned ahead of time, but if it is something like a zinnia or this bucket of sunflowers back here, which I have been cutting since I would say about a week and a half ago, I put a CVBN tablet into that bucket of water. I put that bucket into the fridge and then the stems just keep on going in. I actually do not change that bucket at all with new water for that whole week and a half and the stems end up doing pretty well. So um, I found that I've been able to basically keep the same water in the bucket with a CVBN tablet for anywhere from a week to a week and a half without any issues. Now that we've got that, that done, I am going to put 
horizontally on the table stems that I feel are harder for me to grab out of the bucket. So my foliage is a good one. So the basil here, it's just because sometimes the stems do get stuck with each other. So it just makes it for a much more efficient bouquet making process if I separate them out. Status is definitely a big offender of this. So I'm gonna put the status out. And even the celosia to a certain extent is a little bit difficult to maneuver around in the bucket. So I'll also take those out. But everything else can more or less stay in here. And I find that it also gives me a little bit more peace of mind if I'm moving a little bit too slowly to make sure that the stems stay hydrated. And I would say, except for the basil, everything that I am putting out is, it, it can tolerate being out of the water for a bit. But that being said, most stems can tolerate being out of the water for at least an hour or so. Um, so it's, it's really not a big deal. All right, I think that is all of them. So I really just have, kind of hard for you to tell, but I have a pile of basil, celosia, and status here. So let's get started. Let's do, I actually already have a bit of a recipe because I had already started making a bouquet for uh, someone close by who wanted to buy a bouquet. So I'm gonna, I basically do a sunflower, an amaranth in the middle, a cluster of aster. So as you can see, I'm only at three stems right now. And this bouquet is already looking, I don't know, a third full. So that's why I love aster. And I put a celosia. We're gonna put a pink one in here because it is, I want the fall colors here to match with the amaranth. Some status. We are at one, two, three, four, five. Straw flower. See, I probably should have taken a straw flower. Six of verbena. Seven, gumfrina, eight, put a snapdragon in here. Look at this Potomac apple blossom. Nine, so we're already at nine. Put another sunflower, 10. And I'm gonna put another slosia here. 11 and some basil 12 so this could operate well as a $15 bouquet but I want it to feel a little bit more full so I am going to add a smaller aster bunch here we go so I think we are at 13 stems this is what it looks like so it's pretty fall vibes, I feel. All right, cut this. Whoops. Try not to make a mess in my living room. But stems are already starting to fly all over. It's okay. And my bag of rubber bands. Whoops, probably took out a bit too many. That's okay. We've got one bouquet down, just like that. All right, next bouquet. Focal, one, two, amaranth would be, this is a big amaranth. Look at that one. Three, verbena, four, celosia, Five, another celosia, six, gomfrina, seven, snapdragon, where is this? Eight, and do some status, nine, ten, straw flower. Ah. This one's stuck, that's why. This would be 
11. Actually, I'm going to choose a different color. Let's do a white one. This would be 11. Probably do a Rebecca 12. And we'll do another sunflower. 13. So I think this one's looking pretty good. And of course, we got to top it off with some basil. So this is 14. So really no fussing, just getting these in. I mean, it honestly, it looks a little bit better once I bunch it up like this. And once I wrap it, it's gonna look more full. Again, remember the name of the game for market bouquets. If you're gonna sell them at this kind of price point, anything under, you know, 20, $25, you've got to make sure you are maximizing your time in terms of being efficient. Another focal. One, two, three. I'll do two asters here because this is not very full. Four. Seven. I'm going to count this as like, I don't know, three stems, 10, because there's a ton of straw flower on here. Some status, 11, actually I don't need status on this one. Let's do Gumfrina. This is 11, 12, call it with the Gumfrina. Some Snapdragon, 13, Verbena, come on, 14, do some basil, 15, and we'll do a small sunflower, 16. This is, <laughs> this is a good value one. So, if you can see it, there you go. goal was also to originally to harvest some dahlias, but it started raining a little too heavily and the dahlias were getting really wet. So I didn't want to do that, but this will do. So we've got three bouquets so far. Another one. One. I'm going to run out of amaranth. Two. Do three. Four. Some status. Five, six. Gumfrina. Seven. Verbena. Eight. Whoops. Great. Pick that one up. We'll do two of these. So nine. Some straw flower. Ten. Snapdragon, 11. Ah. This guy kind of, uh, see this is what happens when you don't store Snapdragon correctly. It ends up angling. And I don't think I can save this one necessarily because these are geotropic. Sometimes if I try to bend it backwards, it can be flexible or I end up snapping it. So there goes that one. Got more Snapdragon though. I forget what number I was on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it is. Ten. Get a basil. Let's get a big basil. Eleven. Oh my god. And then we'll do another uh do another sunflower. And do a white one. Twelve. I think that one's good show you the basil on this one is ridiculous but it does make for some good filler here go. okay for our 
four bouquets. I think my ability to make more than like six bouquets is gonna be a little limited right now. I have enough flowers outside. I just need to go and harvest them. Okay, two, one. So I'm out of amaranth, but I have this crazy slosia. So I'm gonna count that as kind of this substitute amaranth right now. Two, probably want a little bit more of a contrast here. Three, do four, five, six, seven, eight, do another aster, nine, ten, eleven. This one's looking good. For kicks, I am going to add actually some status. There we go. Look at that one. 12 stems. Where is my scissor here? Okay. You know what? I'm going to add. Is there a small one? Yeah. Small aster here. Perfect. All right, there we go. Try not to fuss around too much with it, but also um, sometimes like the vases that people use, they have more of like a wide neck and then your flowers end up feeling like they're not as full, even though you have the right number of stems. But I just wanna make sure that, you know, if I'm selling on Facebook Marketplace, people buy the flowers, they're happy with what they're getting and um, they feel like that it's worth the money. So, you know, we can talk about whether or not you're underpricing, overpricing compared to florists, but these are ultimately people who might become regulars and buy from my CSA. So I think it is really important to get them um, what they feel like is value. All right, we're gonna do, I think one more easily. One. Put a few slogans here. Two, three. I'm gonna put um, basil in the middle to fill it. Four. Actually, not the aster. There we go. Four. Put this one. Five. Where is this? Six. Seven. Some straw flower, eight. Comprina, nine. Snap dragon, come on. Ten. Do another one. Eleven. Do another sunflower. Twelve. And then we'll do the basil. Thirteen. Do another basil here, 14 to round it out. There you go, look at that. Perfect. So I have, I think it's six bouquets right now. And while I certainly have enough to do a few more, I'm starting to go low on filler like basil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for the rain to stop, harvest more, finish making these bouquets, and then put, I'm gonna start putting these on Facebook Marketplace because as I said, it takes a while for the posts to start picking up. And because I do post in some local groups, sometimes it takes a while for the admin to accept that post. And I find that you typically need like at least 24 hours. So um, I'm gonna get these up. Hopefully I can get some pickups today, but if not, you know, tomorrow is totally fine too. So we'll stop the video here and I'll pick up when I finalize all my bouquets.
So it is now Monday and I've finished my deliveries and basically sold out all of my flowers. That being said, I did not have a lot of flowers. I So I made six yesterday. I made um, an extra full bouquet today. And then I actually had an order for two vases. So in totality, I basically sold nine bouquets. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about just, you know, my first objectives this weekend and then uh, my return or my ROI. So my objective was really to just use my flowers that I had harvested. Um, if I had more time, I honestly would have been able to sell at least, I think, another five bouquets. I just, um, it's just been so busy at home and then with work has also been really, really busy. So I ran out of time and at most I could just do the nine bouquets. In fact, I was harvesting this morning and making more bouquets. Um, but the second thing was, you know, my asters finally came in and my asters were purchased from plugs. I believe a tray of those plugs were about $40. I wanted to get some sort of ROI on them. And I knew that really, you know, the bulk of the asters had come in basically late last week. So they were perfect for my market this weekend. I still have some more asters outside. Um, I'm actually planning on using them more for just bouquets for a friend who just moved into a new house, bringing them to work for our center conference table um, and kind of just like sharing that with friends. But I'm glad that I was able to actually use some of the asters as the main piece in a bouquet to get that return on investment. So let's talk about return on investment for this weekend. Now, I didn't have to sit outside in the cold rain for four hours, um, but I had to move my bouquet somehow and I deliberately was prioritizing delivery. What I love about delivery is that I am in control of my schedule. I obviously, you know, charge extra for delivery, but I also can sell multiple bouquets at the same time because there are a lot of people who, when I deliver, want multiple bouquets just to, you know, maximize their delivery fee. So I only had two pickups um, for the nine bouquets. Um, and within that two pickups, someone picked up two bouquets last night and one person picked up a bouquet this morning. Even that pickup this morning for bouquets was stressful because I sit in all day meetings, you know, it's just one of those things where I really need to coordinate with my husband or I need to make time out of um, a meeting. I, I can't be leading a meeting to go to the door, right? So, um, you know, pickup for me is stressful, especially if it's not on the weekend. So, um, but I did have a delivery route and, you know, part of the issue is that I accepted a delivery that was just honestly too far out and I only charged $8 for it. I did say, I will only do this delivery if it's, you know, at least two bouquets. So they did buy two bouquets. So I was able to basically, you know, sell it for $30 plus $8 for $38. But I was hoping that I would be able to get a couple more people closer to where that person was. And that person had reached out to me repeatedly before asking if I would deliver. And this time I was just like, you know what, let me try it. So if I had to do it again, I probably would not take that delivery because that person lives 21 miles away from me. So just back and forth, you're already at 42 miles. Now, that being said, the next closest delivery to that person was 16 minutes away. So, you know, it wasn't a full 42 miles that I'm driving round trip, but I would say that I probably drove an extra 15 to 20 miles to get to that person. Now, when you break down that 15 to 20 miles, let's say it's 20 miles, right? The IRS rate is like 0.59 cents per mile. So let's just say it's 60 cents a mile, right? 60 cents times 20 miles basically gets you to $12. So it's just one of those things where, you know, you need to be charging at least $12 instead of $8 for the delivery fee. And that's just for your wear and tear and gas. That's not even for your labor, right? Um, but again, you know, you have to do these things to really learn um, and to really be able to adjust in the future. So I took on three other deliveries today in addition to that delivery, which meant that total and delivery fees, I made $19, which pays for my time, pays for my gas, but doesn't pay for my wear and tear. That being said, a lot of people are going to say you are charging way too little. Someone on my YouTube once said we charge $7 just to walk across the street at our florist. Um, 
I'm not a florist, right? People do not come to me expecting to pay like $60 a bouquet plus that florist type of delivery fee. Um, you know, unfortunately in some ways, like they see me as below a florist and that's obviously something for me to work on, but it is unrealistic in my view to think that I am going to be able to charge event and floor style type of delivery fees for something like this. So all in all, I made $135 off of the nine bouquets, and then I made the $19 on top of that. So, okay weekend, you know, like good side cash money. I would say that the harvesting and then the making of bouquets took me about an hour and a half. So it was still very, very profitable, right? Let's just say it took me two hours to do all that, 30 bucks, you know. I'm still about like $100 in terms of profit, and I would much rather have done this than have done a market. The one other thing I will say is that, um, you know, sometimes people in Marketplace, my husband and I were kind of laughing, we're like, who goes on the Marketplace to buy flowers for like consolation? So there was a person who was like, I would like flowers delivered to this person. There was a death in the family. And then she goes, I hope they're big bouquets. And my response to her was, these are bouquet sized at a $15 market bouquet price point. Um, but that being said, a florist would easily sell this for $30. Um, because this is for a consolation death in the family type of event, I'm happy to throw a vase for free. I have so many vases that people have given to me when they're moving and I just want to get rid of them. So that was a win for me. Um, and instead of using a full market bouquet, I also saw that as an opportunity to use some of the shorter stems that I have in the field. So that's what I basically worked on this morning. She got way more than a $15 vase. I would argue those vases could have easily sold for $30 each. Instead, she got two vases for $30 plus $5. But the way I look at it is, I would not have been able to use those stems in a market bouquet because those stems were just way too short. I mean, I would say that each stem was probably about 10 inches maybe, which works well in the vase, but not in a market bouquet. So I felt good about that just because I was able to utilize stems that would have gone to waste. I was able to get rid of a couple more vases that I did not like. In fact, one vase had such a outrageous red that I had to wrap it up in craft paper just for me to not have to see the red, but I thought they both turned out really well and it was a really good chance for me to practice. So all in all, I thought this was still a pretty good weekend. This might have been my last weekend for the market for warm loving annuals. Because I still have some more flowers that are coming in, I am contemplating whether or not I do another one of these for next week for, for, for next weekend. And the final thing that I will say is that I've noticed that when I put something on Facebook Marketplace, I need to give it at least six hours for it to pick up any kind of traction. This is especially because I am posting in other groups, other local groups, and it depends on when the admin approves of those posts. But even if they were to approve it right on the dot, you need to give it some time. There were some times where I would post it for two, three hours and I would say, I'm not getting the same kind of reception that I got earlier when I did the Facebook Marketplace. And I have to remind myself, I did that over a period of two, three days and the, the momentum really built after day one. So this time I timed, I timed it and I noticed, okay, after six hours, I started getting repeated inquiries and I completely just shut it down after. So that way when I went to bed, I was not gonna expect a message or an inbox full of messages the following morning. So right now it's marked as pending. I'm gonna close it out as sold and we're done for the weekend. So we'll see if I do another Facebook Marketplace weekend next weekend. And if I do, I will definitely make a video, but until then I will see you next time.